my wife, a former national speech champion, <laughs> told me the teleprompters may not work and to print note cards. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Doug. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Doug Belgrad, one of the classiest, smartest, kindest men I have met, an executive and now producer who, if we could all emulate, we'd have a more productive and less dramatic business. Thank you. I want to thank the staff and board of the Epilepsy Foundation for this honor. And of course, Mark Gorman and Andrew Gumpert. Mark is married to one of my favorite people in the movie business. Karen Hermelin and I had an incident earlier in the week where I promised to roast her when I came to stage. Karen, is that true? Yeah. It's true. How about, I'll just say I love you. How about that? No, no, because I get to talk about Gumpert, too. Okay, Andrew. What can I say about Andrew Gumpert? In December, I got about 300 phone calls telling me how much I was going to love Andrew Gumpert when he started at Paramount in January. It turns out that those 300 phone calls were true. Andrew, where'd you go? Is he? What are you doing back there? Well, you're not gonna do anything with that now. The, just go sit down. <laughs> he is a man of incredible character, as is obvious in his commitment to his work, to this organization, uh, and certainly and mostly to his family. He is also a man of a calculated and deep, deep patience. As he mentioned earlier, on his very second day at Paramount Pictures, a Tuesday, he came in and sat in my office and asked me to be the honoree for this year's event. <laughs> Tuesday. I was gumpied on Andrew's very first Tuesday. My wife and I are very lucky. We have two happy, smart, athletic, and may I say most importantly for me, kind and thoughtful children. Uh, Harper and Gideon are here, up past their bedtime for the second night in a row because they saw the Dodgers lose to the Giants last night and stayed for the entire game. Uh, Gideon Harper, why don't, why don't you stand up and uh, wave at everybody? They, they all feel like they know you because all I do all day is tell hockey, softball, and baseball stories. And nobody would, would disagree with that. Um, thank you guys for coming. I promise that this won't go on forever. Um, funnily enough, this is the third event that I've been to at this hotel in the last two weeks. <laughs> in fact, many of us were across the street last night for the Japaigo event which honored Anne and Jim Giannopoulos. Japaigo is an extraordinary organization that provides nurses, midwives, and education programs to women in underdeveloped nations. Two weeks ago, with our friend Jeff Clifford, who's here and is on the board, we were at the Independent School Alliance for Minority Affairs, 
that helps identify and prepare kids to uh, be admitted to and to go to LA private schools. Okay, that had a point. Some combination of these events, my almost 14 years as an executive at Paramount, and our most recent transition with Jim coming in to run the studio, and the trip that Andrew and Mark, Mark, now you're hiding backstage. Are you coming on to close everything afterwards? Christ. And the trip that Andrew and Mark took me on to Children's Hospital um, has left me a little reflective. At Children's, as Andrew told you, we met a five-year-old girl who had lived through at least twice weekly seizures. I mean, come on, all of these things add up to some measure of necessary reflection. So I will reflect. Everyone has always said to me, many of you in this room, Mark, I don't get it. Why have you never gotten fired? <laughs> How many bosses can you possibly have? Or my favorite, dude, you have like nine lives. <laughs> and I have never, never, ever been a cat person. <laughs> I will not endeavor to answer any of these questions directly, except to say and speak about the sheer brilliance of Laura Ziskin, as Doug mentioned, the class and steel of Sherry Lansing, the meticulous, nearly violent training of Karen Rosenfeld, <laughs> and so many others, including an extraordinary group, many of whom uh, have been here all night, of the very best people at their jobs with whom I have worked a long, long time and to this day. Lee, Ida, Randy, Elizabeth, Rona, Megan, Jeff, and many more, thank you all very much. Okay. We're more than halfway through. Some of you prepaid to park, we're going. Back to my reflective mood. As I was thinking about what I wanted to say tonight, I couldn't get, dude, you have like nine lives out of my head. And here's what I want to say about that. Wouldn't it be great if it were true? Wouldn't it be great if we could all have nine of them? However the universe works and whoever's in charge, just nine lives for each of us. Not to have nine shots at pitching in the World Series, although it would make my son very happy. Or to be an astronaut or a great writer or God forbid, a cat lover. <laughs> but nine shots to get as full view as possible about what it all means. Okay, all right, I get it. Too grand a notion. I would have needed Eric Roth or Akiva last night to help with that, and the threats of the writer strike were too much to bear. <laughs> so I narrowed my focus. How about nine lives to experience a lot of the things that the people sitting in this room next to you tonight have experienced. That I can get my head around. My grandmother would call it taking a walk in someone else's shoes. 
And so, if there is someone listening, other than all of you people who have to stay through the end of this speech, <laughs> here are the nine lives for which I'm asking. One is easy. That's this one. Have there be a hack at Sony? Have Andrew Gumpert be available two years later to come to Paramount? Have Andrew Gumpert ask you on his first Tuesday at Paramount to be honored at this event and have enough people you have worked with along the way who will make donations to incredibly important causes like this one in your name. Easy. <laughs> Two, to be one of the people sitting here tonight or like I was last night or last week at events like this who have the means to donate, all of you. Three, to have someone in your life, a friend, a relative, a colleague, a spouse, kids pay attention, this is your mother, <laughs> who cares about issues, small or big, that gets out in the world to participate, regardless of your means, to contribute with your time and sweat equity. Four, to be just one of those people who are born knowing how to help. My grandmother would describe them as people who know what their calling is. People like my wife's parents who are here tonight, like my brother-in-law, Erickson, who have also dedicated their lives in whatever manner they can to helping people. Okay. Five, to be one of those extraordinary people like Phil Gatone or Susan Page, the executive director of the Greater Los Angeles Epilepsy Foundation, to dedicate oneself to cajoling, conspiring with like-minded people, and challenging those who aren't like-minded to see things as you see them and to play a part in solving the problem. Okay. That's five of nine. Five of nine. Uh, here they are specific and personal. To be a parent of one of these kids to truly learn patience and responsibility, to learn to appreciate the little things and the big, and be people like Mark hiding backstage, Karen, Andrew, and Nicole, who are some of the kindest, most grateful people I know. Seven, to be a sibling of one of these kids, to learn to recognize their challenges and their frustrations, to help push the chair or make the bed when mom and dad are exhausted. Eight, to be one of these kids afflicted by this terrible condition. Maybe the five-year-old girl we met at Children's who through the work of the foundation and the care and cure event, as Andrew said, had state-of-the-art laser surgery and went home two days later seemingly cured to a family who loved her no more or less than the day she went in for the procedure. Okay. Nine. And this one probably means you had to be really successful at the other eight. To get to come back as one of these doctors who spent their entire adult lives dedicated to helping these kids. Not worried firstly about themselves or the things that they have. To come back as one of these doctors to care for these kids and with the help of people like you, 
hopefully find a cure. Those would be nine great lives. Thank you.